It is vote time in Shawnee, and we are going to speak with Commissioner Lauren Richter here in just a moment, as we want to encourage everybody in our community to get out and vote on June 13th. Uh, you can early vote on Friday, just before that, if you would like. Uh, but Tuesday, June 13th is when we go to vote on seven charter changes for our municipal government. Our district six, I believe, uh, I think it's six <laughs> commissioner is Lauren Richter. And we will bring Lauren in now to say hello, Lauren. Hi, yes, Ward 6. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Richter, it's been a tough time through your district. Um, I, You guys took a lot of damage. Yeah, we did. It's um, It's been an interesting first year, and I would say that outside of outside of natural disaster events, weather. Yeah. And well, it, um, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Let, let's talk about that a little bit. It has only been about a year now. You went through your first primary last year, and then you had your runoff, and so you actually began sitting either late August, early September. How has that first year gone for you? It's been... Uh, a roller coaster. I have, I, I knew going into it whenever I was campaigning that I was learning from a fire hose of information coming at me. And I still feel like that every day for the most part, but I have built up a lot of resiliency and I've, I've acquired a lot of information and learned a lot that it doesn't strike me as hard when the information comes. And I feel more knowledgeable than I did a year ago. And like now that it's summertime and I'm off work for the summer, um, now I will welcome that fire hose. Uh, I feel like I got like a condensed version every couple of weeks throughout the school year. And then now it's just, it's engrossed all over the day for me if I want it to be. So I'm happy to learn a whole bunch at any point in time. Well, hopefully now it turns into a kid playing out the yard and we pull up the garden hose and we're able to take the sips <laughs> to refresh yeah, ourselves. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you've had one election um, when we did the sales tax uh, question to the people, but that was something that was kind of dropped on your lap as you began your sitting year. I know the, these questions, though, you've had time to kind of digest, and I'd like to ask you about some of these uh, propositions. Are you okay. ready to go? Yeah. All right. So the, the residents of Shawnee go, get out and vote on Tuesday, June 13th, unless they go early. Um, so of these propositions, let's just start with number one and the ward voting propositions. Give us your thoughts. I, I'm excited for it. I, I was approached a lot last summer throughout the campaign process. Um, if I would be in support of a ward specific voting uh, charter amendment, and every time I said yes, it made sense to me because inherently it was simple. Um, if I live in the ward, I should get to elect who represents me. And then that's it. It's not at large for me. Um, it makes sense that our mayor is at large because he represents the entire body. And I took it as, as, as simple as that. If I live in the ward, I should get to vote for my ward representative. And then that's it. Um, I can see where people think, well, it's not just the ward six or the ward whatever that those people are making decisions on or voting on. And I understand that. Um, that's where we all come together and we vote um, for our wards and I'm represent representing our wards. Um, and then we vote at large for the city. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I would prefer that that I vote for my representative and that I didn't feel like anybody else had anything to say about it if they left, lived outside of the ward. Um, if, okay. if, you know, things didn't go my way in the election for my ward representative, I would at least know that the people around me, the very close proximity people around me uh, were the ones who decided on it. And I wouldn't ever feel like um, it was out of our control as a ward six or, or anything. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to be, um, I wouldn't want to think that I had any kind of sway over another ward official either. So I would just prefer to keep it, I guess, in-house in that case, ward specific. Cause it's just, it just makes more sense. Especially okay, when that does make, yeah, that does make sense. And as we prepped a little bit, you, 
you kind of separated the propositions for us that there were four a certain way and three a certain way. Explain that for uh, our uh, residents. Yeah, I, uh, I'm looking through my notes here. Um, so proposition one is the, is the word specific voting for representatives. That one is local to Shawnee, uh, nowhere else in Oklahoma or anything. They're, they're not worried about that for us. That's us. Um, proposition three is the swearing in of commissioners and mayor. Um, we had a public commenter who came to one of our meetings, um, during the time that we were shifting from two meetings a month to one meeting a month. And they, they are the ones who caught that as, as I understand it, they were the ones who said, well, what happens then whenever we go to one meeting a month, the charter currently says that it's the next, the next, uh, or, you know, it says, uh, the third Monday or something like that. The language is going to change to just simply say that we, or they, the mayor commissioners will be sworn in at the next meeting. Uh, gotcha. that one's funny specific. Um, okay. it's, it's our swearing in, it's us swearing in our people. Okay. Um, and there's another one about um, the Twin Lakes that's coming up. Um, as Proposition I six. Six, yes. Um, the way it's it's kind of laid out, I guess, in a summarized term is that it would be like there's some redundancy in city codes, which I'm still looking into because um, I'm not finding redundancy. I'm finding like conflicting things. So maybe those are synonyms and I just don't realize it. Um, and then stuff about our... I would say like those three big ones are like city specific ones. Other ones seem to just like two, four, five, and seven. They seem to just be um, looking to align our wording with the state's alignment uh -huh. wording. Um, and for about a week, I was trying to find that wording, <laughs> what ours was, which I know to go to the Muni code. Yeah. But that's because I learned that. I learned that through a lot of digging over my campaign season and when I was elected, getting to tap in as anytime I wanted just a text or phone call away from the city manager. She was at my disposal. I don't know that I would necessarily yeah. have that direct of an access. I'd have to go through the proper channels to get that information. So I learned where the Muni code was and then spent time going over. I'm still going over the propositions where it is in our code and where it yes. is in our charter and then um, finding it in the state statutes, which I did finally find on our on our city website that there are links to that document for yes. the state statutes. Just found it today. <laughs> yeah, I have very good. Up on Google, the, the really, really long, drawn out, decrepit way of doing it, just typing right. in people until I found it. It's, it's on the yeah. city website. I so, found and, it. <laughs> so, and so that's good because we can point people to that right now in yeah. the sense of if they go to the city website um, on their phones and, and they just click up at the top, it's going to say government. And from government, we mm -hmm. go down to choose mayor and commissioners when you yep. hit the drop down. And yep. then from mayor and commission, you simply go to the sub menu, which mm -hmm. will give us the charter election. And from the charter election site, you can see a lot of information. It's the starting guide. There's a video presentation where you can hear the uh, city engineer actually talk about uh, some of the charter changes. I believe it was. It, I think it was Seth. Then the frequently asked questions, Lauren, is what you just touched on, in mm -hmm. which there's actual um, now uh, place. There's actual now live links that they can hit, and they'll mm -hmm. see the Shawnee code, and then they can even see the auditor's uh, version of the state code, which is a condensed version, yeah. so it doesn't get too long and timely. But I believe the city now has taken over 50 plus questions that they have thrown into that fact sheet. So mm -hmm. you guys, the city staff, I know you're proud of the city staff, but they're really yeah. trying to make it easy for people to find out information. Yes. Yeah. I, I, this, there's 56 questions on it and on that frequently asked questions thing. And when I go through each one of them, I very rarely have had a follow up question or, or couldn't find something after that. Um, right. As a commissioner, gives, I have follow up questions. <laughs> yeah. But it, that, it gives, that's for me. <laughs> it, it gives information very clearly. And I would recommend everybody who has questions to, to go find that. And so Lauren, let's talk about the three that are, that uh, you described as being state yeah. alignment. Um, okay. How do you feel about that? 
How do you feel about um, those three? Let's see. So like proposition two is competitive bidding. Mm-hmm. Um, unless I'm told otherwise, but I'm definitely going to clarify, cl- clarify with city management this week. As I understand it, like we are more strict on our competitive bidding process. And I think the only difference I could find so far is like how and when we open them, the actual bids. Yeah. Um, other so the than one that, thing, the one I'm thing that I noticed about, about that is that basically it's a defensive maneuver in order to protect the city from litigation that would cost the city a lot of money and potentially um, we would lose that litigation. So it cost us more money. Yeah. And I think uh, it's also a way to like, if we want developers or, or any kind of bids to come in where they're not used to doing business with us, like if we want to expand the pool of people to get better bids or lower bids or better services, um, they won't have to learn how to do our bidding process because if right. we're, if our process is what the state's process is, they're used to the state's process, then they'd be more welcome in, in that case to come to us. And wouldn't yeah. and, say, well, they do it differently and I'm not messing with it type of thing. Sure. So and the other one that also is kind of a defense, it seems like against litigation that we ultimately would lose because of our own wording would be the con would be the uh, employee, the requirements for the employees. There's just certain things in there that the, the state statutes take precedent over that uh, we really are just kind of have an open window for litigation. That's the one that I'm going to have to ask probably the most clarifying or follow-up questions on. Mm -hmm. Um, When I read the state statute, it talks about, um, right now as the state statute reads in a paraphrased English teacher sense, that elected officials and officers cannot cannot engage in the sale or purchase of real or personal property. Uh, They can't be part of the bidding process. Like, someone who is an elected official or an employee couldn't put in for a bid um, of work of some sort, as I understood that. Um, There were like three or four criteria. They're on my computer, though, which is where I'm at with you right now. Um, the, The state law that references it, um, it's, it's a link. I just clicked on it to make sure it was live. It's a link on the fact sheet under one of the questions. Yeah. So that's good. I looked through it already and read through it. I'm going to try to find it for you here in this second that I'm in um, with you. Well, it's, it, that's okay because the, the people can go and that's find it, right? that. The one thing that I think is really um, pertinent there is we can't tell people where to live. I mean, in the sense of, we can't require people to live somewhere. That's just that's just old language. Uh, for the conflict of interest one, is that what you're talking? No, about? for the city employees. Oh, that's for city, the city employees. employees. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to that one because I have my t- typed up notes on that. Um, qualifications for city employees. Okay, that's number five. It looks like proposition uh-huh. five. Um, that's conflict of interest. Proposition four is employees. Prop okay, then four. I've got, it. I've got it written out wrong. Uh, Prop four is qualification of city employees. Okay. That's what it says on the city website. I just had to check. Um, So the way I understood it was um, our residency uh, is Shawnee. I say our, our, our city charter says that a city employee has to have lived in Shawnee for one year before they can be employed with the city of Shawnee. Okay. Is what what I've learned from the fact sheet and then the the charter itself, that they have to have lived in the city for one year before they can be employed. Um, Removing, let me see if it's removing or changing it. Yes, removing it entirely is what the proposition says to do, to remove it entirely and then to realign with the state and federal laws. Um, Let me scroll down a little bit more. Uh, But it says that if the proposition passes, only the city manager must live in city limits. And then there's some other like eligibility guidelines on that. So I think that it's bringing us in line and against litigation. I think that that's the big deal is that we have a litigation would be like, I think um, I can't remember if it was a month or so ago. And then a couple of times in the fall um, when things have been brought up to say um, like, you know, in case of litigation, like we have been compliant in this way, or we want to prevent litigation. I've, I've always wondered. And I think one or a few times asked, well, what possible litigation could there be? And I, I can't remember exactly what 
the items were, but I remember getting those answers. And so sure. and now I'm not a- I would be asking like, what kind of litigate, what could we be in trouble for if that's the case? Right. Because um, it kind of goes along with like, um, you know, ward representatives living in their ward, city employees living in their city, having an interest in where they work and not just for the payroll of it. It's like well, a paycheck and then they go home. Right. I'm not a lawyer, but my <laughs> understanding, <laughs> my understanding is it's against federal regulations and state regulations to demand somebody live somewhere as a requirement for them to work for you. Okay. And so it, with, with, <laughs> with my understanding of that, it's very easy to see how very expensive litigation could be begun yeah. from the outside. Yeah. Um, but that'd be something but like anyway, that. I think that I think that everybody should do their own homework on that right. and make up make up their mind. Let's move on to um, the you touched on the recreational use of Shawnee Twin Lakes, correct? Yes, that one. Um, that one's the one that's been a little bit more perplexing for me, and that's that's rough for me to say, anyways, because I don't like being um, perplexed <laughs> about stuff sure. a week out from a vote. Um, this one is, as I understand it, like there was, and this is before. I was elected, there was a city code update from the Lake Advisory Committee's somewhat uh, suggestion. Yeah. Um, this one would remove language from the charter, which is right. harder to do to change the charter than to make an ordinance um, to the city code or to amend a city code. Uh, but I, this is the one that I'm gonna have to ask the most questions about this week um, okay. with city management. And okay, I've been so, out for about three weeks. And so I've just been going down the line with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so this, again, I'm not the lawyer, but what I understand, it's a constitution is built to be a framework, just like bylaws with a, a corporation or a charter with our city. And usually it does not prescribe the ways in which we are going to act, meaning it doesn't say you must do this or you cannot do that in a charter. Those are handled in ordinances um, that are brought before a com- before the commission that are then open for meetings, for public input, and then can be changed that way. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what's being addressed on this particular topic mm-hmm. with the with the lakes is that um, the the lakes contained within our charter actually have been prescribed use and no use in different ways, in different versions. Mm -hmm. And that is abnormal for a constitution or a charter to actually have within them. Those are better handled. And the mayor, I heard say the word nimble. It helps us to be more nimble on what we can and cannot change. But the process is always going to be slow and it's always going to have to be transparent before the people. I see. Okay. Nimble. Um, yeah. So that's just how I understand it. Yeah. Um, commissioner commissioner. Um, okay. Now let's go down. Let's drop down to um, seven as the final one to talk about. And that's the cemetery and perpetual care. What are your, what are your thoughts on that one? That one is the last one. Um, I haven't even gotten to it yet. That's that's more for the late. I'm not. I don't want to be. I don't want to lie. Not no. Not at it all yet. Um, yeah. Okay. When when I set it out, my last day of school was May 19th. So when I set out, I had whatever working knowledge I had of all these propositions, and then from May 19th, I was gonna every day read something about everything that I could, and I've just been going down the line. And even though. Yeah. Uh, I have known about ward specific voting. I've talked about ward specific voting longest. That one, I still gave it its due time and diligence. Um, this one is, is I couldn't speak too much to it other than like we are going to have completely new language about the perpetual fund. Um, I know that I've sat in at the commission meetings in Andrea and I think even Joe Vondren have talked about each one of these propositions just as like a summary but in my head, I'm thinking about what they've just talked about with the other propositions. I'm not going to lie because this one made the least amount of like background knowledge in my head. Um, okay. I think that it means to like 
align us with like sit like the state and the state statutes and regulations and like the funding requirements okay um well yeah as, yeah and as residents we know a lot of work needs to be done at our cemeteries and we do yes. need to work out work out the problem so yeah. we very good cemetery that we maintain and own and that's fairview yeah and so, I mean, I really respect you as a volunteer and the time that you put in as commissioner, Lauren. Thank you very much. And I don't want to take up any more of your time today. You're um, so sweet. <laughs> I do appreciate very much. I mean, it takes a special person to get up there and sit on that oval. And you've proven yourself definitely over the years Thank to be you. a very special person. It's still like I and I've been up there since September. It's still every time I'm like, OK, like I can I in a good way because i like it and it keeps me grounded and in check yeah. if you will i like feeling i don't at the time because it's 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 nerve-wracking but i feel that pressure still yeah it's somewhat nervousness just because i i'm on a platform bigger than me and and it's live and recorded and i've got a microphone all those little things that make public speaking the worst yeah. um as the year is gone i've gotten better at it but i like still feeling that weight on on me of like i'm here and i'm not just me i'm here and i'm representing my ward and there are actual consequences to what i'm doing and what i'm saying and what i'm voting on and and it's a really heavy weight but i'm glad that it's still there because i think it keeps me grounded and in check with with the reality of what it is it's not just a position i didn't just win something and now i get to be this for four years it's it's the real deal. So I'm happy for it. And I hope that it stays that way, that wait all four years. Cause well, that's the, my motivating factor. Yes. Well, commissioner Richter, I'm sure it will because you to me are the real deal. And I'm glad Thank to you. have you as one of the representatives up there. Thank you very much for being with us today. And we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye. It is a heavy weight to be on that oval. And I'm telling you, Every commissioner that I've talked to, once they take a seat like uh, Lauren Richter has taken, they always mention that fire hose. Uh, the information that um, just gets put in front of them each and every, now every month for their meetings um, is a lot. And so they do deserve our respect. Um, and also they're very open to speak with any of us. So please feel free to reach out to uh, your representatives, my representatives and city staff. Again, thank you very much for tuning in to Shawnee CTV's election coverage. We hope that this information is helpful. And remember Shawnee, all of us together, we're building community one season at a time.